All right, everybody, it's October 24th. I got my mic. We're in the alternate translation of Sun Tzu's Art of War uh, because we kind of breeze through these and the other generals are really enjoying uh, their reflections in the beginning. I think they're excited. So uh, we're going to cover these two real quick. I haven't read in depth, just briefly looked. So I think that we're going to get some fun stuff from this one. If I can go a little esoteric today, we will. So welcome to Stand Tall. Here we go. Master Sun says, the weather means the seasons. Cao Cao says that the rules of ancient military state that operations should not be carried out in winter or summer out of concern for the people. That makes sense. Um, winter's very cold. It could affect the way that you hold your weapons. Your hands could freeze, etc. Um, and you would just not be as effective. No need to senselessly die or send your people to die. Jing Yu quotes the founder of the Tang Dynasty, saying that in ancient times, many soldiers lost their fingers to frostbite on campaigns against the Huns, and many soldiers died of plague on campaigns against the southern tribes. This was because of carrying out operations in winter and summer. Wang Qi says, quoting Fan Li, this is the meaning of the saying, don't go into another's territory at an unfavorable time. All right, so just personally... In my day to day, I spend a lot of time in attics and crawl spaces. Um, crawl spaces, I would say, is more of the plague um, because of, of little creatures, crawlies, and things like that, icky, mucky, damp air. Uh, and then attics would be the summer. So, like, very hot, easy to be exhausted uh, if you're not conscious of your resources, like water and your energy, then it can really get a hold of you. The weather means the seasons. I think if we kind of reverse engineer this as far as seasons are concerned, and we look at it from more of a metaphorical perspective, there are seasons of life, and there's winter and summer. We have these really positive times and these really depressing times in our life, whether through seasonal affective disorder or a death in the family or of a close friend, maybe a pet. You know, we always... We always have these struggles that are put in front of us in life that we have that are that are challenging. And so winter could be a time of depression. And maybe it's not the best to be carrying out operations in winter or summer. If summer is a period of joy and exuberance and good things happening, etc., it might be good to just be careful because of the plague, right? Because of getting sick. You could work yourself so hard that you get sick and things like that. All right. Master Sun says that the terrain is to be assessed in terms of distance, difficulty, or ease of travel, dimension, and safety. Now, dimension, I love. Very esoteric, because we can really go to some out-of-this-world levels if we allow. Zhang Yu says that in any military operation, it is important to know the lay of the land. When you know the distance to be traveled, then you can plan whether to proceed directly or by circuitous route. When you know the difficulty or ease of travel, then you can determine the advantages of infantry or mounted troops. When you know the difficulty or ease of travel, when you know the distance, it's important to know the lay of the land. The dimension. Let's just, let's just focus on dimension just for funsies today. If we're in the third dimension, because that's what science tells us we're in, what if that's not the case? What if you were able to determine that you're not trapped in this dimension and that now you know that you've been maybe proceeding by a circuitous route through life when there's more of a direct route available just because you weren't aware of the lay of the land? So what if the advantage for you is to know that there's actually an easier way to travel through these dimensions to get to your destination. That easy way that may be revealed to you might involve more work on your part, but the outcome becomes closer much quicker. If you spend X amount of time trying to figure out or waiting to do something or waiting to be shown the way when you could literally just go and start you might finish it in two hours. You might finish it in six hours. I will say the first time I ever did a panel change out was very daunting. And I thought it would take me a long time, but it only took me six hours. But I dreaded it and dreaded it thinking oh, it might take me two days. What if I mess up, etc. So 
knowing the difficulty or the easiness of it can really determine the advantage of the mindset. Your mindset is crafted by your third eye, essentially. And with that is where we really get dimensional. And that is when we know that the distance is infinity. When you know the dimensions of the area, then you can assess how many troops you need, many or few. When you know the relative safety of, safety of the train, then you can discern whether to do battle or disperse. As you move through life, if you know the dimensions of the area, you can assess how much inner strength you need. Do you need a lot or little? Your troops. When you know the relative safety of the train, then you can discern whether to do battle or disperse. Are you among friends or allies? There's all of this stuff. Are you amongst what seems to be allies, but they're not allies and things like that. So it's always good to assess and reassess. There's this um, military term. I think it's like the OODA loop. Um, observe. I, you know, I'm not sure what it means, but the OODA loop, that, that part stuck with me. But it's like you always are constantly in this cycle of like observing, making decisions, reacting and consistently doing this and that is the art of war too many times people focus on so I'm, I'm starting another book by ryan holiday perennial seller and he says that so many people focus on the microseconds and the immediate success and then he counter he contrasts that against all of these other great works of art whether it be a piece of literature a movie, a song, and how long that some of these bestsellers weren't even really like chart toppers until three, five, seven, ten years later. Books, same reasoning. And so when you're doing things, you can't think, I'm going to see success by the end of the day or the end of next week. You have to be ready to fight the 10-year war. And that's why we read The Art of War, so that we can stand tall. For however long it takes so let's go over here a short reflection today by the daily stoic for october 24th entitled the fountain of goodness dig deep within yourself for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging wow okay so i feel like i've discovered this lately um the power of the inner eye the power of your inner vision the power of your soul is is actually very strong um the world will give you what you want. You just have to make sure you're asking for it the right way. A lot of time, and this is by Marcus Aurelius, Meditation 7.59. All right, let's finish this, and then I think my reflection will, will make more sense here. Excuse me. Today, we could hope that goodness comes our way. Good news, good weather, good luck, or we could find it ourselves, in ourselves. Goodness isn't something that's going to be delivered by mail. You have to dig it up inside your own soul. You find it within your thoughts, and you make it your own actions. The fountain of goodness. Man, everything is good, right? So just like one of the very first days recently on a job, brand new bid, like I had a new guy working for me, and there's all these little things that kept going wrong. All of these little things. And instead of throwing a fit, making a big deal out of it, creating a lot of drama. You just pivot and you just adjust. Turns out all of that ended up being good. Why? Because we didn't turn it into a big deal because we didn't allow it to affect us. We didn't allow it to start the week off on the wrong foot. You have to find it. Whatever your goodness is, whether it's moving out of your parents' house, starting a company, getting a promotion. You have to do the things to make that happen. You are in control. The more power and the more blame you place elsewhere, the more blame and the more fingers you point at, oh, well, I'm not getting promoted because my boss is this. I'm not getting promoted because this manager, blah, 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 blah. You're giving that person power. When what you should do is step up, learn the skills, and get past. If you want to move out of your parents' house, go. Just go. Change your environment. Change your circumstances. Change your outcome. It might be hard, but you'll never find that goodness within yourself. So, 
as we move forward, always think whether it's this for Marcus Aurelius and Ryan Holiday and the guys or, or Jocko Willink when it's just like good. Good. This is good. Whatever happens is good. That's stoicism. The obstacle is the way. If there's something hard, it's hard. And you have to dig deep within yourself, right? The, the fountain of goodness comes from within. If you say something is going to be hard, bear with me, but you fear that it's going to be easy because you have an ulterior motive, say, okay, so like in my profession, a lot, not a lot, but enough times there's, there's people who have a GFCI trip in their bathroom or somewhere in the house and all it is is pressing that button on the outlet, okay? If I fear that it's going to be that easy and that's all it's going to be because I want to make money on the service call instead of doing the right thing and saying, I can't really charge you, Mr. or Mrs. Homeowner, for coming out here and just pressing a button. You can be sad. Oh, I wish I would have talked them through it on the phone, whatever. But the goodness is within yourself. You're just pressing a button for somebody and you get to explain something that they need to know anyway, right? Because they're it's their house, right? You don't need to hold that trade secret within you or something. And if you say something is going to be easy, but you fear it's going to be hard, then it's going to be hard. So if you fear it's going to be easy, right? and you want to make money, it will be easy and you won't make money. If you're too big to do the small things, you're too small to do the big things. If you fear something's going to be hard and you say it's easy, it'll probably be hard. If you say something is going to be easy, even though it might be hard, but you decide that everything along the way is good and easy or a learning experience, then all of a sudden, nothing is hard. Makes it easy to stand tall. <laughs>